गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन टू सेट थेरी बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई लेसन आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर द लर्निंग आउटकम्स इन दिस लेसन यू विल लर्न अबाउट यूनिवर्सल सेट सबसेट प्रॉपर सबसेट एंड सुपर सेट सो लेट स्टार्ट विद यूनिवर्सल सेट वॉट इज अ यूनिवर्सल सेट A set which contains all the elements of other given sets is called a universal set. The symbol for denoting a universal set is U, capital U or E. For example, if A has an element one, two, three, and B has element two, three, four, C has element three, five, seven. So, what is the universal set? What are the elements in the universal set? so universal set equals to 1 2 3 4 5 and 7 it contains all the elements of a b and c here a is a sub, is a subset of u b is a subset of u and c is also a subset of u and what what u u is actually a superset of a u is a superset of b and c as well let's have another example if p is a set of all whole numbers and q is a set of all negative numbers then the universal set is a set of all integers yes for example if a is a a equals to a b c b equals to d and e c equals to f g h and i then universal set equals to a b c d e f g h i can be taken as a universal set we look at just two simple sets in this video set p which has 1 2 and 3 as its elements and set q which has 1 2 3 4 and 5 as its elements understand the elements well this has 1 2 and 3 and this one has 1 2 3 4 and 5 this is a part of this and that's why we say set p is a part of set q and we learned in the previous video that part of also means subset so we can say that set p is a subset of set q do we have a symbol to represent this yes it's written like this p is a subset of q the letter u is sleeping on this line so when is p a subset of q set p is a subset of set q when every element in p is also present in q look at the elements every element in p is also present in q but this statement raises a new query look at set c and d set c has 4 5 and 6 as its elements and set d has 4 6 and 5 as its elements both the sets have the same elements which makes them equal but every element in set c is also present in set d based on the definition we can say that set c is a subset of set d this also tells us something more it tells us that every set is a subset of itself p is a subset of p q is a subset of q and so on for some reason this does not seem entirely correct and that gave rise to a new concept of proper subset look at sets p and q set p is a part of set q but there is at least one element in set q which is not present in set p we say that set p is a proper subset of set q this sign indicates proper subset and this tells us that all elements of p are present in set q but there is at least one element in q which is not present in p we can see that 4 and 5 are not present in p so that's the concept of a proper subset sometimes it is also referred to as the strict subset can we say c is a proper subset of d think about it 
That would be incorrect since there is no element in D which is not a part of C. There has to be at least one such element. That's the only difference between a subset and a proper subset. Just one last thing we need to understand. Just as we say P is a proper subset of Q, we can also say that set Q is a superset of set P. This symbol is used to represent superset. Now it's your turn. You have to solve these questions. Uh, question number 1, if universal set has elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and 13, you have to tell which one from these A, B, A, C, D, E are the subsets of a uh, universal set. Question number 2, if A has element 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, B has elements 2, 4, 7, 8 and C has 2 and 4, you have to fill in the blanks by uh, by putting these symbols whether these statements are true or false. Question 3 you have to write all the subsets of the following set like you have to write uh, in A part the subsets of 3, subsets of 6 and 11, subsets of 2, 5, 9, subsets of 1, 2, 6 and 7 and subsets of A, B and C. Thank you so much. Yeah.